All right, our next question is still using x cubed as our kind of approximate or a simplified population function. What will the population be in one year from time five? And of course, we could just plug in f at time six but, and get an answer, but life is more interesting if we pretend we don't, pretend we don't know the formula for f. What do we know? Uh, what do we know? We'll say in a sec. Um, so we pretend we don't know the formula for f. But we do know that the current population value is 125. And we know that the current rate of change of the population is well, the name for that is f prime of 5, the derivative of f at 5. And we happen to know it's 75. Let's use these facts without knowing the formula for f now to say what will the population be in one year. Well, we have 125 people right now. We're growing at 75 people per year, and we're growing over a time span of one year. And that one, you could say, is year six minus year five. So the arithmetic is easy. That's not the point here. Um, another question is, what will the population be in one-tenth of a year? So in 0 0.1 years from time five, well, we'd say we're starting with 125 people. We're growing at 75 people per year every now and then. It's good to include your units. And how many years are we going into the future here? 0 0.1. And that 0 0.1 is time 5.1 minus time five. What will the population be at time x? Well, we'll follow the same pattern, 125 plus 75 times. Now, here's where it gets tricky. This one year was the duration between now, time 5, and time 6, or between time 5 and time 5.1. So in generally, I'm just going to put an x here minus the 5. So this value is how far into the future we're going from 5. You could also call it delta x. So we're saying the population at some time in the future is the population now plus the rate of change times how far into the future. We've already called that the, predict the calculus prediction equation. Um, but we can write it back in terms of our generic terms. 125 is f of 5. 75 is f prime of 5 times x minus 5. And we're hoping that that's approximately equal to f of x. Now, this is a linear function, and f of x is probably nonlinear, so they probably won't be exactly equal at time x, but we would hope that they're close. So we can look back at all this and say that all this is approximate. because we're pretending that the rate of change stays at 75 exactly for all one year or a tenth of a year, um, but it probably doesn't do that.
because if, x, if f of x is x cubed, we know that's growing faster and faster. So we hope it's approximately equal, and we'll see later how good it is. So this is all together a way of approximating f of x using information at time 5. And our book calls it L of X with a lowercase l. Um, when I type a lowercase l, it's hard to tell apart from a one or sometimes a capital I. So I like to use an uppercase L because that's easy to tell apart. And we're saying that's F of five plus F prime of five times X minus five. So this is a linear function. We've got an intercept. We've got a uh, kind of a, sort of an intercept and then a slope times x minus some initial value. So this is a linear approximation. Of f near x equals 5. It's actually the best possible linear approximation as long as you only care about values right near x equals 5. So we could say it's our best local local meaning right near time 5, so that's the local linear approximation near x equals 5. Our idea is, would you rather play with linear functions or nonlinear ones? Well, linear ones sure are easy compared to nonlinear ones, so it's nice to have linear versions, approximations of nonlinear functions. The other name for this is that it's a tangent line, and that'll make more sense on the graph when we graph it in the next, uh, oops. Um, uh, so it's a tangent line to the function, uh, but tangent lines in geometry class are only allowed to hit the curve in one place, but this is okay if it hits the curve in more than one place. So we're kind of redefining the term tangent line from geometry to say we want it to be a good local linear approximation. It's okay if it hits the curve somewhere else too. Another way to say what we're saying here is um, that nearby any particular point we can approximate with a tangent line, which is saying if you zoom in enough, Most functions look approximately linear. So that is one of the big lessons of Calc 1. If you zoom in enough, most functions can be well approximated by a line. And our next thing is going to be going and showing this in Desmos.